Gabapentin is widely considered one of the consensus first-line treatments for restless leg syndrome nowadays, but not everyone finds that the drug works for their restless leg syndrome. What are some of the reasons why gabapentin may not work? I'm Dr. Andy Burkowski of Relax Health, and today's topic are the reasons why gabapentin is maybe not that effective for restless leg syndrome in certain individuals and what can be done about it. So gabapentin, which used to be known with the brand name Neurontin, is one of three drugs in the US in the group called alpha-2 delta ligand calcium channel blockers. That's a big word, but basically what these drugs do are that they decrease the nerve signaling, the brain cells signaling to each other, kind of quiets that down. So the, the urge to move, the restless feeling gets diminished by the use of these drugs. They're old seizure drugs. They're used mostly for nerve pain nowadays, but they work in a similar fashion for restless leg syndrome. Gabapentin being a generic, uh, very affordable drug is probably the most prescribed of these three. And uh, it does work for a lot of individuals. However, many people report that they try gabapentin and it doesn't really work. So why might that be? Well, it has a lot to do with the absorption of gabapentin and uh, the timing of the gabapentin. So first of all, gabapentin is taken uh, as a tablet by mouth and it's absorbed uh, in the small intestines, the part of the small intestines that's attached to the stomach. So the, the, the first part of the small intestines. And then once the drug gets past that, it doesn't really get absorbed. And it's absorbed by what are called low capacity transporters. So how does it get from the intestines into the bloodstream? Well, it's gotta be taken up by the body into the bloodstream and there's a limitation to that. So gabapentin is limited into how much can be absorbed into the body where it will actually have its effect. So the dose of it is really important. So some people are saying, oh, I'm, they take 1800 milligrams or 1200 milligrams of it. Not a great idea because roughly at about four to 600 milligrams, the dose of gabapentin is very poorly absorbed. Some of the studies show that at 600 milligrams, only 45% of the gabapentin is absorbed. And if you take more and more of it, it gets the percentage is less and less. So 1800 might be very little more than taking 400 or 500 or 600. So in my clinical practice, I generally limit the dose of gabapentin to 600 milligrams per dose. But the timing of it is also important. So gabapentin, the effect of it may last four to six hours. So if people are taking gabapentin in the morning or they're taking it in the middle of the day, it's not having an effect on the restless legs at night. It's long gone by the nighttime. So if people are taking gabapentin for restless leg syndrome as opposed to seizures or neuropathy, they need to be taking it in the evening and at night. It helps to have it absorbed with food. So generally, People are taking it maybe an hour before bed or an hour before their restless leg symptoms start. So it's a good, good to be used as a preventative treatment before the, the symptoms begin to start. But once they're at 600 before bedtime, then we may typically add 200, 300, 600 milligrams with dinner where it might be better absorbed. So they get a little bit of dinner for the evening and then another boost right before bed. So generally 600 milligrams times two doses, maybe adding a third dose in the late afternoon, uh, that's kind of the limit of the drug. So if uh, somebody is not absorbing the drug well and there's a lot of variability from person to person, so for some people they may absorb a lot of that 600, other people may not absorb it. So it seems to be highly variable from person to person unlike a lot of other drugs. One of the ways to get around this, of course, and I've talked about this in other videos, is to switch to gabapentin and a carbyl, which often goes by the brand name Horizon in the US. The issue, of course, with gabapentin and a carbyl is that at the time of this video, it's extremely expensive and rarely covered by insurance. So most people will prefer to go with regular gabapentin. But gabapentin and a carbyl is absorbed as an extended release through high capacity nutrient transporters. So if someone is maxed out on two doses of 600 of gabapentin, potentially they could switch one or both doses to gabapentin and a carbyl and they, they would get more of that into their system. 
another issue is the concept of immunity to gabapentin that could be caused by the phenomenon of augmentation from dopamine agonists. There was a clinical trial of gabapentin and a carbyl that showed that those who had augmentation from dopamine agonists or who had been on dopamine agonists in the past were less responsive to gabapentin and a carbyl when uh, they, they took it compared to people who had never been taking dopamine agonists to begin with. So this is yet another reason never to start taking a dopamine agonist. It could potentially make other treatments less effective. We don't know exactly why that is. It could be that just the condition is, is worse after exposure to dopamine agonists, so the gabapentin is not completely effective. So yes, those with augmentation, it may not be effective for everyone. Those with variable absorption, it may not be effective, but it's worth trying, but it has to be tried under the right dosage and timing uh, for it to work and, and be at the optimal level. And even then, sometimes it just may not work, and that's why other treatments uh, should be tried after that. Uh, another uh, last point I'd like to make about this is that there could be recovery after augmentation. So if someone, uh, gabapentin wasn't completely effective during augmentation, maybe a couple years after recovering from augmentation, maybe the gabapentin could be effective down the line. We don't know. We haven't really, there aren't really studies of this, but that's a theoretical possibility that if it didn't work at one time, it might work again in the future when the condition gets better. As always, these videos are for general information only and do not constitute the practice of medicine or the giving of medical advice. Any decisions about gabapentin or absorption should be made under the care of a licensed medical provider. And as always, one of the keys to sleeping well is to relax.